I want to welcome everybody to Crash and Game Night. My name is Matt Diorio, your host. As always, we are joined by the Beanied One. What is up, all my nerds? What's going on? Oh, I was gonna give you this epic intro, bro. You guys, you guys keep lagging, just, man. Like, you guys drawing it out so long. I know. It's like, <laughs> anyways, that's Gerard Barrera. Yeah, how's it going, everybody? How's uh, what's going on, all my nerds? Thank you for uh, hanging out. Uh, another good week. Uh, what's going on? And since he wants to comment on me drawing it out, fine. That's Alliance main Jason Bolidio. Thank you very much. Hey, there How's he is. it going, guys? <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, see, it feels so <laughs> weird when it's drawn out. Come on, man. Like, just, you know, I feel you. You know, you got that, get that, like, little, like, little intro. Cool, but, you know, what, what are you, like, buffer, man? Like, you just trying to, like, get that long... Dude, intro you know what though? But you know what though? Each of us. It was kind of cool. Michael Buffer was at the NHL draft introducing the Flyers draft pick. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me, if I were that that draft pick, man, getting introduced by Michael Buffer. Yeah, that's, pretty cool. That'd be great. I remember him from the uh, WWF days. And boxing and yeah, you know, so yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean <laughs> or maybe oh no, I'm thinking of someone else. Never mind. No, Michael Buffer did a couple of um yeah. WrestleMania and stuff. WrestleMania uh, that's and right. stuff like yeah, that, yeah. but he was he mostly did, yeah. for boxing yeah. and mostly boxing. Um, yeah, he's the voice of boxing. Let's get ready to rumble. Yeah. yeah. Um, Twelve rounds of knockout. Yeah, if we all yeah. we all know that. So how we uh and we're 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 down Theo. Theo's not feeling well tonight. There's oh, honestly, I don't know what it is that's going around, but there's a stomach bug that is just uh, wrecking people that, right now. That Colorado, uh, the Colorado air. <laughs> Colorado <laughs> air. Okay. The altitude sickness. Okay, you know, for people that have lived up here for ages. But anyways, how we doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Just been a busy week, busy yeah. work week. Other than that, just. Uh... Yeah, just uh, laying low. Yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. Man. This week has sucked. Yeah. Thank God I'm on PTO right now because I can't deal with another day like today. It was just everything. Oh, you started your was, PTO? Yeah. So once I clocked out at 3.30 my time, I was like, peace. I'm on PTO. Nice. See you guys on Monday. Yeah. Just hanging out tomorrow and then Fan Expo on Friday and Saturday. There you go. Oh, sweet. So, yeah, that'll be a fun, fun weekend. You got all the uh, uh, autographs and everything planned and ready to go? I do. I'm going after three people personally. Sweet. Are they all at different times or? No. So with these guys, they don't have any like autograph slots. You just go to the table, line up. Oh, and, wow. Um, We are doing a photo op with the Supernatural crew, which we've got that already booked and then um theo's got of course a laundry list of ones that he yeah, i was about to ask how much how, how long is the list this time this year um i want to say when we were talking about it it was damn, like two, I was, that's why i was hoping like he was gonna be on the show i know we were gonna talk 2K. about it like oh damn damn yeah oh yeah oh. And it, I, I, that, you know that, that that deserves a damn <laughs> damn too bad he wasn't that here to okay. that damn, damn. Jay. well like yeah damn yeah, yeah. Damn. dude damn. two grand um, that, that's that's a couple payments baby <laughs> oh yeah, man it's, it and is the, uh yeah crazy oh man but that's uh but that's cool though good for Theo um, and it doesn't help that Brie Larson was announced for Saturday. Oh, so, oh, I'm sure. Did that? Did he add that? I, yes, he did. I, I would, oh, I would have. Yeah. Oh my God, one of the most beautiful women in the world. Um, but uh, and talented women so, in the world. Yeah, but there were some cancellations. Melissa uh, Marissa Tomei canceled, so he's not doing that on. Oh, Sunday. bummer. And then um, Shannon Doherty. Uh, canceled as well, so that changed the schedule for the Charmed ones. Oh, um, 
So my wife and him are going to do the the team up for that one. So now that one did drop a little bit in price. It went from like 200 bucks for the picture to 115. <laughs> so, Oh, that sucks. Um, Shannon wow. Doherty can't make it anymore. Well, I mean, honestly, she's been battling like, um, cancer and all that. So like, Oh, oh. you know, honestly, yeah, it, it's all right. You get Bummer. it when she's had health issues and, and whatnot. Yeah. So, Oh yeah. It's all good with that. So Oh, that sucks. That'll be that'll be great. Um, then yeah, I'm gonna be going after Jennifer Hale, uh, Keith David, which Jerry and I had a nice discussion yep. on that one, and I'm gonna do that instead of Patricia Somerset. Get two autographs, one for the Mass Effect book, and then one um, on a. I'll see if he's the Arbiter. The Arbiter. Yeah. Um, which is kind of funny because I just finished that that mission on Halo Two, oh, where sweet. you get to be the Arbiter. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, Fred Tascori, I'm going to go for two with him, one for Saren from Mass Effect, and then also to get our Final Fantasy VII remake book autographed yeah. by him. So nice. we can add one more to the good old the collection there. So, you know, I think that that's what we're good, good little the, segue to open sure. conversation too. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It'd be like, Oh, you see these other ones in here? Yeah. We know them. Yeah. They're friends of ours. Why don't you come on? Why don't you come hang out with us? <laughs> so speaking, let's segue right. Speaking of Final Fantasy, um, our buddy Caleb is now a proud papa. That's yeah. right. Congrats, bud. Congratulations, um, Caleb. Yep. So the both uh baby and mom are doing great. Good, good. Oh, good. And good. then also keeping on Final Fantasy, uh, buddy Bart, Drew Creaseman host of Final Fantasy um, Weekly and also the Rockies beat writer. Um, they had their baby. Nice. Um, granted, they were, Congrats. He was, you know, the baby was born um, almost six weeks early. Oh, because uh, oh, wow. there were some things going on there. So um, baby and mama are doing great. Okay, um, good. Good. And Drew being Drew is posting dad jokes on Twitter. As he should. As he <laughs> should. Nice. The worst dad jokes ever. Come like, on, um, they, they got no. they, they got to be good ones, you know. Yeah. So, congrats to uh, both uh, Drew and Caleb on their uh, on some babies, on um, beautiful, healthy babies. Every mm-hmm. and the moms are all right. Every everything, uh, yep. uh, everything's going well. Good, good, so. very good. Yep. Yep. So, so enjoy your time up, and so. uh, and uh, yeah, just have fun with the the new. Enjoy the lack of sleep. Yeah, I was about to and say that too, from, yeah. from uh, other say goodbye to me, sleep. You know, enjoy the sleep all you can. Yeah. <laughs> and I will say this: Drew and Caleb, you better be getting up with the babies at night, helping out Mama. Yep. Enjoy. Happy, happy wife, happy life. Because <laughs> Mama's gonna need her sleep. So, anyway, so let's kind of get into some news. We've got a bit to talk about tonight. Um, Oddly enough, about all three platform holders, both Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox. So mm. um, Nintendo had their um, general meeting for shareholders. Uh, it was like uh, last week, I believe it was. And um, President uh, Furukawa of Nintendo was asked about how they're planning to combat like scalping you know for for the switch too because mm-hmm. we all know when the xbox and the playstation um launched right at, you know right there tail end of COVID, you know covid year 2020 mm-hmm. um there was a shortage because of chips you know the semiconductors which those ran dry because you had all these people going to work from home so you had to get laptops and everything up running faster and, and manufacturing yep. those so it ran into a chip shortage so um but he was asking how they were combating the the reselling on it. So um, his answer was that the company's main plan for combating scalping was to just make sure players don't have to turn to resellers because they can't find a console. So their idea is just to make enough consoles so there's enough at launch to get them okay. and find them. So yeah. Um, That's now, not depending go on... Well. That depends. I mean, honestly... You know, we're in a different economic time, right? So not everybody may be able to afford the Switch 2 based on what the price point is. 
you know, it may be, hey, can I afford the Switch 2 or do I need to put groceries on the table type of thing. So um, it depends on where inflation is at the time we get the launch. But, you know, in some regions that allow them to go after scalpers and stuff like that, you know, they are going to take into account circumstances in each region. So like here in the US, you, you can't scout tickets to concerts, but you can scout consoles. They can't really come after them in the United States, but there's some other regions that allow them to. So, um, but he did say that though, that um, the semiconductor shortage that affected, you know, numerous companies and stuff um, is no longer an issue. They, he says they're going to produce enough switches at launch. So Jason, I know you seem skeptical on that. I'm very skeptical. I mean, it, I, I it's think, still going to be the yeah. supply and demand. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I agree with Jason. I think I think no matter what, they're going to be fighting demand. Um, I just think they're going to be. I think they're going to be more prepared uh, yeah. for the amount of demand this time, mm-hmm. and and because they're not going through a pandemic. Yeah. So I, I think they're they're going to have healthier projections, and I think they're going to be able to meet. You know, the, I would say the first, you know, maybe months of demands, but I, either way, I, I kind of agree. It, they're going to get sold out. It's going to be, it, you know, a huge launch. So, like, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't see them being the first ever, you know, complying with the demands and like, no, no, ever the the launch they were completely okay. Everyone got like, no, they're going to sell out. Yeah, they're going to sell out for sure, and it's going to be. Just like the other ones where it's um, the first wave is going to be literally bought it up. Um, mm-hmm. Just how we saw it many times before, just what we see with a lot of different products. First wave bought it up, or if it's not bought it and it's sold just in store, there's going to be a lot of placeholder uh, placeholder uh, services that are going to mm-hmm. you know take up all that. Or they're going to have, oh, limit one, but they're going to start giving the entire family or you know or what they always do and and bundle the hell out of it with a a crap load of stuff for you to get the console so which which people are still going to do you know it's the first uh we want to be the first one on the block to get it you know you want to be the Mm -hmm. you know have the new shiny piece of hardware and i get you that's fine if you have the money to do so do so but just like me just like uh, a lot of others we don't have that ability to so I'm not even going to trip. I mean, I did the same with the PS5. I waited a year and a half in order to get a PS5. And I was like, yeah, well, I, I, I stand by a lot of launches typically don't have full potential or they're just still getting used to from what they were used to before. Mm-hmm. And it's not really like, oh, you, you're not going to see a big difference. Just like I'm saying with... um switch to you know uh, i don't know what their what their major launch title is going to be but if they do the dual release how they've kind of always done in the past you know you're not going to see a massive since, yeah since we you yeah you're not going to see a massive like oh my god look at this graphically you know it's going to be roughly the same and Nintendo actually i take is... it back it's the wii jason we we you... twilight princess oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, you're gonna have that mm-hmm. dual release, and it's still not gonna be like the biggest, like massive upgrade, you know. And, and Nintendo is never known for that as well. So Nintendo is never the let's run graphics to the ground kind of console, you know. Uh, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not like, I'm not. Do you think there's gonna be? A, a, do you also think there's gonna be a less of desire to to upgrade, or a less of not a desire, but a less of. Uh, uh, need or angst to uh, to uh, upgrade also because it's been announced that um it's backwards compatible so like n- no matter what we'd be able to use our switch one games on the switch two yeah and uh, you know if it like you said if if they really wanted to they could just wait and, and like buy buy switch two games until they uh, you know actually buy the console or something like that mm-hmm. like they can yeah they it still gives them like more of an option to wait but uh is do you, do you think so as well definitely i mean oh, we've okay. seen we've seen we've seen what happened with a certain console that we're going to talk about soon that had no exclusives for two three years mm-hmm. 
And look what happened right. now. You know, they're, they are scrambling to try and figure out what's going on because they're saying, oh, you know what? We're not going to have any because, you know, I, we understand it's a time of pandemic. It's a, I get that, you know, that's very, that's very gamer friendly. But from the business side, you're like, yo, there is zero reason for two years, for two to three years in order for you to get that new console. So, I mean, when PS5 comes out, instantly, boom, there are PlayStation 5 only games. Or mm. there are mm. remakes At or launch? remasters. Remakes, so, remasters that are that are from like PS2, PS1, PS3 days, which when you feel it now, you're like, oh my God, that that crisp quality is worth it. But if you don't have that, and again, with Nintendo, they typically go backwards, but they, they're they never like graphically massive enough that needs to be uh that needs to be like oh i need that new remake i need that new remaster so you so for me graphically and coming from a pc person as well unless unless the you go into like some virtual 3d some ultra high definition playing a switch 2 game on a switch or a switch one game on a switch two game is just going to be the same it's just going to be the only difference that you just now have a switch two that plays switch one games so jason let me kind of rewind and to point out though is that when you look at the ps5 launch lineup within that launch window right because there's always that window that they talk Mm. about i think uh, ratchet and clank was the only like real ratchet and clank playstation exclusive was correct was the only exclusive um and then you had spider-man remastered right but Spider-Man was already out on the PS4. Mm-hmm. Everything else within the lineup was a PS4 original title. Or you could play it on PS4 like Sackboy, right? Although Sackboy's Big Adventure had, you know... Yeah, but even then you can make the argument that lineup was still stronger than the X- the, the Xbox Microsoft uh, lineup. So there was still angst to want to buy the, uh, the play- PlayStation 5 more than the Xbox. Well, yeah. I, so Xbox Series X launch titles. All right. So what was available at launch? Exactly. Okay. So you had everything was cross gen, right? Um, and the only thing that wasn't cross-gen play was you had Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. And NBA 2K21, you had to get the Mamba Forever Edition to be able to play it cross play, cross-generational. Um, Warhammer. So, I mean, to your point, though, I mean, like, honestly, the... The couple of exclusives. I know that's Jason's favorite word. Yeah, you know it because I mean, I mean, was you guys, on PS5 at launch. You guys say Ratchet and Clank, but I mean, look at the like. I'm looking at the Ratchet and Clank games, you know, by release date, you know, and 2021 has only had Rift Apart. Yep. Then the last Ratchet and Clank was 2020, 2016, which is just before the wow. four years just yeah. before the. Uh, Wasn't that um, the movie adaptation game? Uh, yeah. I think so. Oh, like the tie-in yeah. Yeah. reboot. Yeah. But then even still, that was PS4. So we had a PS5 mm-hmm. game, a PS4 game. And then the one before that is 2013, which is Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus, which was PlayStation 3. So, yep. I mean, again, yes, it is a remaster. Yes, it's a reboot. It's a, it's a, a long-standing series that goes almost mm-hmm. 20 years, a little bit over. And you're getting a lot of stuff that was, you know, PlayStation 3, then one PlayStation 4, yep. and then one PlayStation 5. And what does that what does that do for the people that love Ratchet and Clank? I take it, it back. They had the pathless. It, it makes them go from one system to the next system because they need mm-hmm. to get that because they're not backwards. It's not backwards compatible. It's not going to be like, oh, it's going to come out on PS3. No, yep. it's only coming for the next one. So you need to buy a PS4 to get to the next one. And then you need a PS5 to get to the next one. And that causes sales for the consoles because it mm-hmm. drives that need where you need, you want to play it. You're, you're a big fan. I want to play this game. 
you know, and that's enough where you can like carry it over into the next ratchet and clank uh ripped apart with yeah ripped apart showcased the hardware yeah exactly completely that's what it does that's what you're supposed to do when you have a new console coming out you want to be able to show off like Mm -hmm. of course it's not going to be 100 percent like on launch there's there's rarely a game that shows off 100 percent of the, the the hardware but you have that ability to say, this is what it has possible. This is what it can do. This is an exclusive just for this system. You know, Sony I... does a great job. Mm-hmm. Nintendo does a great job because they have Zelda. They have uh, Mario. Now they have Sega. So a lot of Sonic stuff as well. Those three will just carry just because those three have been carrying and for 50 years. Quick note there. Sega is still independent, even though they just lost forty-one million dollars. <laughs> I mean, last quarter. Um, they they're they're tying they're tying a lot with uh, Nintendo. With Nintendo. Whatnot, you know. Now, I think here's my thing: is I think if Nintendo goes dual generation, which is what Xbox and PlayStation did, and we can see how you know it hurt their console sales for two years because everyone was like, "Well, the games are coming out on PS4, on Xbox One. I'll just wait." You know, there's no point in dropping four or five hundred dollars on a console. Um, I think Nintendo is going to need to do something similar to, you know, when they did the new 3DS XL, where they only had games that would play on on the XL, which had the upgraded chipset and stuff in it. I think they really need to go with that. If you really want to drive sales to the Switch 2 and get people to adopt, you're going to want to have Switch only games, Switch 2 only games rather at launch. But to your point, Jason, I agree. They, oh, they've been doing like Zelda. I think Zelda is the only one really they've been doing it with because Mario Odyssey was a switch only game. Right. But, you know, yeah. you look at since GameCube, we transitioned, you had Twilight Princess, which was GameCube. And then we then you had Breath of the Wild from mm-hmm. Wii U to Switch. You know, you, you've got that dual generational thing. I really think Nintendo just needs to just come out with something that's a system seller. You know, like get out of the gates. Um, I agree. So, so do you? Are you kind of saying they should just come out with a Switch Two only type games that are just for Switch Two? I yes. agree as well. I, yeah. I think I think that should. I think that will drive sales as well. Yeah. Now, now in in that light, do you also uh, be, just going back to the comparative of 3ds? Are uh, do you just out of my curiosity? Do you think the um, discs or the uh, the games themselves should be remolded in like c- kind of like in the 3ds way? Because they they just had that little chip in the in the corner. That's what mm-hmm. made them different to go into the 3ds. I think uh, uh, nah. back chip. then, chip no chip, CD no CD. You know it, it does not matter because yeah. of how big our technology is with such of the mold okay yeah like back in the day it would have made a huge difference you know but nowadays with... i only ask because yeah that was the that was a big thing like um, they were making a big hoopla about it like oh oh they remade really remolded yeah. the, well, the games part of, me, like... part of me never wants nintendo to go into this quote-unquote cd realm you know it mm-hmm. was the mini cds for gamecube gamecube yeah you know which is okay but i don't i it's it's not them. It's not their style, you know. No, they're going to be staying cartridge based yeah. for the Switch too. Yeah, so yeah. it's going to be cartridge. Think... It might be like just like the Switch ones, where it's just going to be literally the uh, SD drive, just literally the SD drive. You know, that's fine. Okay, perfect. You know, keep keep your cartridges strong, Nintendo. You know, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Like, but I do think they needed to figure out some way to differentiate the product, right? Because that was the hard thing with. Even with the new 3DS XL games, there was just that little tiny logo on the front and on the back, and that was it. And that was the only way you could tell the difference between the two. Otherwise, they looked like a 3DS game. So I think from a packaging perspective, you've got to do something different. You know, make it a different color case or whatever and not be, you know, yes, it's Nintendo Red, but, you know, do something else, right? You might... You know, I don't know what you do from the, but you have. I think you have to differentiate the two between the two because if you've got parents that don't really understand the difference and they're just mm-hmm. being told, "Hey, I want, I want Metroid Prime Four, 
and you don't know which console to get it on, you know, and say that is a Switch 2 only game, which please make it a Switch 2 only game. Mm -hmm. But, you know, say you walk in, parents are like, oh, I've been told to get Metroid Prime 4. They grab it, buy it, take it home, open it up, can't play it in their console. Guess what? Once you open that, that case, break that wrapper, it's yours, you know? So I think they need to differentiate between the two. So we'll uh... also agreed. Cause uh, I do remember uh, having those problems when we, uh, mm-hmm. when we were working on our, at our uh, game store uh, that did happen from time to time where, you know, we had returns. Well, uh, it's the wrong thing. Well, it says 3ds on there. Yeah. I realize that like, you know, it's, you need Excel. <laughs> yeah. But you need an Excel. Like, so... Yeah. Either way, we'll see what happens. We're supposed to get the announcement on the Switch 2 sometime in their fiscal year, which we still have another, like, five months in that fiscal year. So, sweet. You know, I still think September-ish. September, October is where we get the announcement. Hmm. So, um, so on that, moving on over to another in the realm is... Um, Going back to old school Star Wars Bounty Hunter, the yeah, old baby. the old Django Fett game uh, is is getting a remake remaster, and it does look good for what it is. Um, so random though, it's, it's gonna so be funny. it's gonna be twenty bucks. It's Aspire doing it. That which, is cool. Which Aspire has done, you know, Knights of the Old Republic and all that, but they're also the game that tanked Knights of the Old Republic remake. And uh, well, yeah, but we also don't know what so, was going on with that. Yeah, um, but at least this remaster is only coming out for twenty bucks. Yeah, on the it looks play, good. I, it looks well polished. Store, so uh, it looks like uh, they're adding another feature where you can actually uh, change characters and be Boba Fett as well, mm-hmm. and may, I, maybe some other characters. But all, all I saw was Boba Fett. Um, I mean, I I totally remember this game. I loved it. I thought oh, it was awesome the for the time. It. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. So, I don't know if I'll pick it up right away. I'll probably grab it on sale because they put those games on sale like all the time, you know. Um, yeah, you know the the remaster of Knights of the Republic wasn't the greatest remaster, so that's why I'm kind of going to this, going, mm. Mm, you know, let's it's, I get it, but it is to your point, it's random. Like yeah. out of all of them, why bounty hunter? It, why really, the, it uh, really felt like it came out of nowhere. But like, cool, like it was a cool one. But it was like, uh, mm-hmm. like how did this come up? <laughs> you know, that yeah. that was my first <laughs> question to myself. Like, so who thought to bring this back? Like, the, cool. Everybody was like, what? But like, okay, cool, okay, yeah. <laughs> like random, like okay, randomness is going on right now. <laughs> I mean, PlayStation players are like, oh look, we can get it with we can do trophies now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, so it'll be interesting. It looks good. I mean, I'll probably pick it up when it goes on sale because I I did enjoy that game quite a bit when it was originally out. Yeah. Um, so moving on from one set of armor to another, Jerry, this is this is one that's right up your alley. Mm. In the fight for democracy. Oh, hell divers, baby! What's which going is kind on? of okay. So which is kind of funny is. As I was, I prepped for tonight's episode, right? And I'm sitting there playing Halo 2, and I got to the part where, um, right after the Arbor's mission, you go land on the planet with Master Chief and the ODSTs, right? Mm. The level that I was doing is called Hell Jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> so That's funny. Like, and oh, it's full circle. The ODSTs That's cool. and all that. So it's kind full of funny. That <laughs> it's called Hell Divers, right? Anyway, so, um, Helldivers in the last four months since it's launched on PC specifically has lost 90% of its PC player base. Damn. Peak at one point was 458,700 concurrent users. Mm -hmm. It is now at 44,093 as of some of the articles I was reading. So I think, you know, part of it is that, you know, you did have it delisted in like a hundred countries and, you know, now that you know it's been delisted, people can't play it. You know, it's been yeah. relisted in some countries, but and and the whole uh, Sony thing did not help. I mean, even yeah. though it was retracted, but that really did not help. So let me ask a question though, from a Helldivers perspective, right? Is 
is it just the way the game's built that you don't know when new content is coming and all that, that players have played it. They played it for a bit. They kind of saw what the game was about. And because there's nothing really new coming, they just decided to just move on to other things because especially with destiny coming out. No, um, there's plenty to do in the game, you know, plenty of missions to play. Uh, I think, um, a few like a few, like I said, the Sony move and a few other things uh, just kind of put some bad taste in people's mouths, and and they decided to leave the game. Um, and plus, uh, you know, it's also in, in like kind of in, you have to stay kind of committed to it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's one of those games you have to just continue playing, kind of like uh, your own, you, you know, uh, Animal Crossing. You know, you gotta continue going because you have the constant mission. You're at war. But um, I will say I think the uh, devs and the uh, the um, game company uh, uh, is doing their best to keep up with like the uh, the demand I guess really with like the you know the the extra suits and the the weapons coming out um, and you know they also uh, in real time redo like. Or or add missions or or add uh, the enemies on the war map. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they need to be a little bit more frequent and and uh, uh, do a be a little bit faster with those decisions. But other than that, um, I think they're doing fine. Okay, question for you: How often are you still playing Helldivers? Uh, I've been distracted, but I've been. Um, I'm, but that's only been like. Oh, a week or so I, i've been back on it i mean i've periodically still mm-hmm. been back on it how often not, how about... not getting your fight with democracy bro like yeah yo no no i know i've been, been heavily distracted and and my uh fire team has also they have also been uh a little distracted but we've been uh we're we're getting back on it soon you've been distracted by fishing yeah, Let's yeah, yeah. They know, but uh, I'm not the only one. Uh, they a few other games came out like on PC and stuff, so they've been distracted as well. But we're gonna get back on it. Mm-hmm. Jason's like, mm-hmm. you're gonna get we back will, on it. Like Jason's fun. gonna get back on Final no. Fantasy 14. Um, but yeah, so I mean, do you really think it's just Jerry is just the backlash from? Sony and the delisting fiasco that's really caused the player base to just bottom out. Yeah, to an extent. And I'm and I'm sure some people have gotten fatigued as well with the game. Okay. A lot of but, it is this um, game fatigue, bro. A lot of it is also true. I mean, it, it could be a game fatigue that they're, you know, just not sticking with it. It that happens. It's that type of game. Yeah. You gotta stick with it. I mean, you don't have to stick with it, but I mean, like, it's this is the thing with a lot of, and again, it it's like a pseudo MMO. It's not a ma- massive MMO. You can you can kind of put it as one just because of the major orders, um, but yeah, you have to keep the people, the players wanting, or like you want to have some things that mm-hmm. are with are obtainable. You know, like a lot of the major orders yeah. have been within a week so like hey we have to get this yeah. within the week or else mm-hmm. you know it's it's not it's it's not long enough and it's not i mean it's not short enough and it's not long enough it's at that point where it's like the major amount of people will do it but like for myself or for jerry or for those that have like multiple jobs or that just play casually it's unfair Mm -hmm. you know like as a casual player it's unfair for it to be such a short period and you can only participate so much you know which i do agree because that can get a little frustrating because like you said we only have so much time yeah and uh that's why i think they need to do be a little bit more frequent and open up more uh, of the ideas of that they were announcing like um I think if they added like vehicles in the maps, uh, like certain certain times, of th- certain th- things like that, I think it will help the gameplay go a little faster for you to get your missions done and the things that you want to do within the time frame. Didn't uh, you guys just, just get mechs? 
Yeah, but um, yeah, they're a little slow, but they're, they're also mm-hmm. they're awesome. They're a lot of fun, but they're mm-hmm. great, like in a pinch or like if you you anticipate like a, a heavy couple waves coming at you. So like it, it's another it's another strategic uh, um, uh, uh, move to use. But like I said, uh, there's other elements that are kind of hurting it because like one to get across the map and everywhere, like you have to coordinate with your, your guys and you're mm-hmm. running as far as you can. And like as fast as you can, and you have a stamina bar. So like that takes time. So like, at, like a few quality of life uh, changes, I think mm-hmm. if they, if they do with the game, I think they would have people coming back or, or, and even more people sticking with it. It, they're, they're like a, yeah i think there's just a few quality quality of life like things they need to do with the game where I mean, it's been out a, it's been out for a while right so i mean quality of life still yeah i get it fair but again it's you lose a lot of player base because a, a game can be very repetitive there's mm-hmm. nothing brand new you know it's just like every other flavor of the month where you can have that massive amount of fun you know it's it does its thing but once you get the hang of it once you understand it once you you know do the missions quite frequently it does wear and tear on your how much gameplay you enjoy it versus it being like this routine kind of gaming and how much cycle. time you want to dedicate to it yeah. when you mm-hmm. already know what to expect that's yeah. why i think those changes i think will will give people more angst to want to play it more mm-hmm. Cause they can they can possibly achieve uh, uh, more in that shorter time. Yeah. So I mean, that's or that's in that what time my... frame that they have for each yeah. mission. So I mean, if you have a major order that lasts, like let's say, one month, you know, it's got it's got to be a massive order, you know, major order. But it does give a lot of players like time to come back. It gives them time to relax a second. You know, yeah. it gives them time to enjoy, step outside, touch grass. You know, like. <laughs> do do things Mm -hmm. rather than be like oh you know what like i miss his major order and like you and your three friends that you normally play with you know something happens and all four of you are like well there it goes you know like and that's happened and we've missed out we've missed out on those medals where where we haven't have to like we have to you kind of have to like live with it and you're like dude Mm -hmm. i could have done like we could have done so much and or this and that you know it depends on how massive the how major the order is but you like there should be like yeah there should be quick time events where it's like like one day yo like we're we're need to defend this we need to defend this colony we're getting a massive attack cool yeah you know everybody hop on everybody enjoy everybody fight for democracy but then there also should be some where it's like a month long that you know gets people to mm-hmm. come back again gives them time to enjoy it again versus oh we have one week all right next week oh we have another major order right now oh yeah week's over major order you know or like, you start in the middle of the week like oh they're dude, coming i'm not, way I'm not gonna hard. make the major order yeah, they're coming in way too week. fast way too yeah. insane give people time to breathe a little bit it's just like without other mmos final fantasy you have time to enjoy all the progress you know some people do it within one some people do it within one mm-hmm. week some people do it within one year you know, it just depends mm-hmm. on the casualness of the gamer. And that's why so many people are still on it because people don't have that. Like for me, I stopped playing because I don't have that. I didn't have that time anymore. And in, and to have eight people to come together to do it once a week. And they're like, well, I want to get farther. Well, you know, all of us have a life, you know, Yeah, we got to, you can only do so much. And then that's when people are like, oh yeah, okay. Like I'm just doing it once a week. It's something I can just sit down, have fun with a few hours, and then be done with it. I don't need to spend another job doing what Helldiver's been doing, which is why I never got into it. Like, I I played the game, love it, would love to do it more, but then it becomes a second job. Mm-hmm. And you're not getting paid for it, not going to lie. Some people don't get paid for it. Some people do, you know. That's true. Et cetera, et cetera. So- so Agreed. real quick before we kind of get into what we've been playing and stuff like that, um, an announcement came out um, this week that Xbox is going to be going to 
fire sticks. Oh, wow. As in game. Pay- oh, nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. So those that have Xbox um, game pass ultimate, which I've, I have, I've been playing and whatnot. Um, you are going to be able to start playing that via a fire stick uh, 4k max or just a standard 4k, you know, fire, uh, fire TV stick. Um, those start at like 50 bucks and you're going to basically everything that's part of Xbox or uh, X cloud rather is going to be available to be played through the fire stick. So you're not going to need a PC computer. Um, you're not going to need an actual Xbox console. You'll be able, be able to stream it. Um, and when I read this article, Jerry, I laugh because of the conversation you and I had yesterday. Oh, right? re- oh really? So when you look at it, right, it's a Bluetooth com- uh, compatible controller. So <laughs> Xbox wireless controller, Xbox adaptive controller, a dual sense, dual sense, or dual, dual shock, shock four. four. <laughs> also in that list is a, uh, a switch pro controller will work as well because those are Bluetooth. Gnarly. Um, because I have, <laughs> And this kind of segues in kind of what I've been playing, but um, you know, I've used the Switch Pro controller to play Halo through Ultimate Game Pass on XCloud. I've used a dual sense, which is kind of funny because I, I called you yesterday just to to laugh that I'd been playing Halo 2 through XCloud on my Mac, <laughs> but use I used a dual sense controller. And honestly, like it felt a little bit better playing it with a dual sense because I like the way the thumbsticks are designed Ooh, nice. a little bit more. They kind of fit your thumbs and stuff, but, um, but this is big though, right? Because this gives another entry into game pass, you know, mm-hmm. it's, you know, for those people, you know, that can't afford to go out and get a console for four or 500 bucks, right. They can basically spend a hundred bucks, get the fire stick and a controller. Um, because the Xbox controllers are what fifty nine ninety nine right now, so one hundred and ten bucks. Yeah, you're playing games right on through your TV through the Fire Stick. You don't need to worry about it. And on that too is if you need to go to another TV or something, like to pop your stick out and go to another TV, pop it in and keep on going. So it's, I think it's a it's a good for those that are budget you know budget conscious that n- still want to play you know Xbox specific content. I, I think I, I agree. I really think this was a really, really smart strategic move. Like you said, mm-hmm. this just brings more uh, uh, game pass into people's homes I, I, in in, mm-hmm. in a much easier way. And the fact, like like you said, again, you just need a Bluetooth controller. You can get that anywhere. Mm-hmm. You can find that somewhere. Uh, yeah, that just gives people more access. And uh, yeah, I think it's a smart move. Yep. So we'll uh, we'll see how it plays out. Um, my only yeah. concern with that is, is like as I've been playing, even with you know Halo and stuff like that, is like even tonight I had a little bit of frame rate issues, um, and I did have some latency. So where it, you know, I tried oh, to do one you're thing. You're on your and, computer, right? Well, even then though, right? I'm still streaming the X Cloud. It still has to go out over the internet and everything yeah. like that to the servers. So when you add on all of these other options, are you know is Microsoft beefing, beefing up the hardware? on the back end, you know, to ensure that there's low latency for that. Um, but that's kudos for Xbox about. for mm-hmm. kind of thinking more outside the box. Cause remember they were trying to think of their own little stick that can be put into the TVs and stuff like that. They yeah. basically, yeah, that's right. And in that whole project and just went compatible with fire stick. You know, I think that that's a smart move. They leverage their relationship with, with Amazon and yeah, away they go. So, um, it will be uh good move, Cotton. It, that was a good move. Good move, Cotton. Good move, Cotton. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um with that, so we can kind of just we'll just talk about what I've been what we've been playing. So um for me, uh Halo 2. <laughs> oh, nice. Um you know, um, which has been pretty nice to do and whatnot. So, um, and have then you also finished the uh, second season of the Halo show. I have. Ooh. Um, also, how 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 was that? Because I did not even attempt. Um, neither, Jeremy. Neither. Oh, dude, dude, that first season really gave. 
It was such a bad taste in my mouth. It was just so <laughs> awful. I just didn't care. <laughs> it was just so, it hurt. It, it like it it hurt. It disappointed me. Like I was like a kid walking with his favorite blanket, walking away because he was just disappointed. He was like, no, that that wasn't Halo. But I, I'm sorry, man. How was okay? So to answer your your question on that, Jerry, um, season two was drastically better than season one. In it, terms but of in, yeah, in what terms? Oh, that's 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 the question. All right, like how so, how good? <laughs> so the the writing was better. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm but the bar was set here. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you know the CGI was better. The the you know it didn't feel like that makes Spart- sense. It wasn't Tech, like in the beginning of Halo season one where you know the Spartans they sped up the film to make it look yeah, yeah, yeah. and you didn't have that first person in helmet view that they tried to go with oh thank god um, they, re- they really they the really beach. tried for that one but um like ooh, first it's person. still it still fundamentally changed some things um and this isn't a spoiler by any means because the series the season two has been out for a couple of months now at this point um we did not see noble team at all on reach um, which is disappointing oh. because they were the ones that basically got Cortana off reach to, pre- you know, to protect her from the covenant in, in reach. Right. And, and, and t- did that, all of that all happen in that? No, they n- rewrote none that of too. that. Ha- n- all that got rewritten that rewritten they, that didn't like, they, they, they didn't basically... allude to like maybe the, the season f- uh, three, uh, the, oh, that's going to be the first episode kind of like or... a season well so basically the season two ends with master chief on halo by himself trying to stop halo so they couldn't even like um like do a side as a side series of like reach like they didn't even set it up they like it's just no completely they did not rewritten. noble team's gone <sighs> uh the covenant stole cortana off reach that see you know and that just continues to hurt and whatnot That's... um <laughs> <laughs> you know reach was um, tight man like how do you forget reach right never forget game never forget reach you know um so yeah it it was still good don't get me wrong it was still, it was <laughs> the still reluctance good, but no no the pause <laughs> the pause but, <laughs> do you see the pause how right? it's like oh come on you like, well, i mean i it was, was good <laughs> i was like literally when they're doing all of reach right and we didn't get to see noble team at any part i'm like what the fuck uh, i was like uh, come on and we know how uh, much i love reach right yeah I, I love noble team and you just don't get any of that right it's the only spartans really left on, on i reach. at least thought like a setup like if they mentioned it that means like oh they th- you know they could visit that later but no they uh. level reach they took all the spartans armor when some of the UNSC and Oni left Reach, they took all so basically Master Chief and all of Silver Team had no armor. Like Covenant show up and like completely lay waste. And here they are trying to fight with some Marines with no armor. So stupid. Like, but on the flip side is you know, when they get to infiltrate one of the, the Covenant ships, though, you get to see Master Chief kind of be Master Chief again. So like all that bullshit we went through at the end of season one and part of season two, you get to see him be chief again and go, go lay waste to covenant. So that was cool. But overall, I would say a solid six mm. for the season. I would, um, I would make it lower. Cause what I would probably say lower. Cause from what it sounds like you're getting a, maybe an episode or two of like good master chief, footage and like a lackluster season i would i I would maybe put that lower that's just me that's what i'm interpreting well i put season one at like a three so you know um but yeah so (laughs) four is still higher than you know that's still higher (laughs) i have gone so i've gone back to the real stuff and i'm enjoying halo 2 <laughs> nice um, <laughs> i forgot how just satisfying it is just to roll up on a bunch going of back to a really the, a good halo story like a getting good halo refreshed story. 
Yes. Yes. Good um, Halo. <laughs> I am. I am good seriously Halo. enjoying. I forgot how much fun it was to roll up on the Covenant and the Scorpion, and oh, just lay nice. waste. You know, just like, hey, I'm just gonna go blow you up. That was something satisfying about that. But uh, yeah, so I'm partway through that. Um, I was, you know, island wise, um, I'm still up to my bullshit. Nice. I got in everything for my movie theater. I redesigned it a little bit so it looks kind of more like a a really cool movie theater with like big movie related statues out front, you know, and a walkway up into the theater and stuff. So um there's that and then um we did start playing Luigi's Mansion 2, which came out last Thursday. Sweet. Classic, classic. No. Oh no. Oh no. It is not sixty dollars worthy by any means. We were right. We kind of basically said we didn't think it should be sixty dollars for just a remaster. Uh-huh. It is pretty. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty graphically. They did a great job with it, but 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 man, Professor E. Gad yeah, just won't shut the fuck up. Like no. every little tiny thing you do, all of a sudden here comes another message from egad that you got to go listen to and then after you compete complete one little area you get pulled back to his little shop and you guys talk about it and then he goes okay here's your next mission i'll go back in like it all of that takes away from everything that we've experienced through luigi's mansion 3 right and all the quality of life stuff that they learned from so it just honestly it wasn't great um I'm having a trouble trying to go back and play it with the kids. They keep wanting to play it. I'm just like, I really don't want to. Mm. Um, I'm still pl- working on Mass Effect a little bit. Um, working on my LB the show. Um, played a little X Defiant. But this weekend, let's talk about PS. Going back to our original conversation last week about um, touchpads. I fired up Killzone. <laughs> Whoa. And I'm starting to work back on my save file to kind of work through finishing that game. Um, Honestly, dude, uh, like a PS4 it, Killzone, like like Killzone uh, Shadowfall, the Shadowfall, launch title yeah, for yeah. PS4. Honestly, and dude, I've been kind of uh, curious about that it, game too. I've been wanting to play that again because I it was it, it was still a banger. It looks freaking gorgeous, and that was the that that was the other thing. And it, it always yeah, I would say aged, that was one of the best looking games too gorilla it has aged like fine wine in in terms of a graphics perspective even the even the gun mechanics are still fantastic i do miss that starting rifle it went from like smg oh, yeah. to like sniper to a, right to a charged sniper rifle yeah. Oh, yeah it was cool yeah that was a good sure game man. On it. yeah that it, was like, so, i would yeah. say that was one of the best like uh um uh, uh console like mm-hmm uh starting game like yeah because that was yep. uh day one right yeah it was, it was a launch day title, one so yeah it was a launch title so yeah so that's pretty much all i've been playing i've been doing a lot of gaming um oh, sweet okay. and whatnot so jason uh, i've been uh watching more shows um the bear came out and i've been on the binge man I'm oh almost, yeah I'm i need to start the bear with it. oh like i start i started the boys the boys still coming out, so you know I'm giving, I'm giving oh, that. Yeah. A I tried to acolyte. Well, no, because oh I'm, god, I'm, you know I'm I'm all about the binge, you know. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, we're we're like I think we only have like four episodes left of the bear. Um, oh sweet, might okay. might finish it tonight or tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I've been watching the bear. Um, it is. I, I believe it's a good show. I believe it's honestly a good show, and it's. I've uh, heard really good things about it. So um, like, one and two season season two was uh, one and two were great. One uh, and two I, solid I'm, season I'm, three. It's it's leading up to hopefully something good. Does it? It feels like it's a giant build up because they're doing yeah. they're building the restaurant, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it's a, all it feels prep. Like a giant yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll but see. But I'm, I'm excited. Um, but you know, still, still way up in it you know like they i think what they're doing with season three is they're just rounding off all the character backgrounds uh getting a lot of the storytelling aspects of it and getting uh, that the way... opening of the of the restaurant i think yeah, that's well, gonna be the final episode right uh well i mean the restaurant is open but i think they're what okay. they're doing right now is that they're just getting the 
the backstory of all the characters that are in the restaurant, you know, why they're in there, what drove them to be in this position, why they're staying around, what's driving them. So mm-hmm. then that way we get a more character feel. Um, I think that's what the season is all about, which exactly. I get it, you know, fair enough, but you know, it's hopefully we see a lot more, which I'm, I'm, like I said, I only have a few episodes ago, so we'll see. Um, Here's Jerry Myman in the background. I, know, I just see him go like this and <laughs> like, because of the way the background is, you can't tell what he's doing. So he just looked like a mime. Yeah, um, but yeah, um, <laughs> I've been watching more shows. Um, I'm trying to finish off uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, but mm-hmm. the bear came up, so we're like, "Yep, bear." Um, okay. Still on chapter thirteen. Uh, still doing a little bit of side mission stuff. Um, I'm. I really do not like the labyrinth puzzle. It's getting me annoyed a little bit. The labyrinth puzzle. Yeah, the where you have to uh, shift the directions. Oh yeah, that, that that's was a little a, annoying. That's a little annoying. So, uh, taking a breather for a second, I'm like, ugh, just getting annoyed at that. Yeah. Um, but other than that, no, like I'm, like I said, I'm right there. I'm, I'm pulling a Jerry right now. I'm just right at the end, last chapter to go. Yeah, know, but what what this. chapter is Jerry on? Twelve. See, you're still ahead of him, Jay. You're still ahead. Oh. This okay. is what happens. This is what happens, though. When Jerry gets that itch for Red Dead, <laughs> he has to scratch it, and whatever else is out there just. Hey, uh, did you hear Jerry? I think they might be uh, doing the Red Dead uh, game soon. Uh, I heard rumors. We'll see. Yeah. Un- unless Rockstar actually comes out with a uh, uh, an announcement like they did for Six, uh, you know, I'll believe it. But, but I'm I'm ho- I am hopeful. I mean, it, it's but it's, but it's so it's so far out because yeah. you you know how long they take, man. Yeah. GTA Six is their baby right now. It's it's going to be so far out. Yeah. So I mean, like it is a uh, it is a possibility, you know. That would they, be they're getting though. closer, but I don't know. Yeah. You know, again, we'll see. It we'll see. We'll see once it and it, gets it also depends on on six too because you know five. Five is still their cash cow. They're still making money on that game. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, you know, GTA we'll five. see GTA on six. six. Yeah, GTA Six has to come out first, and then probably Red Dead Three, which I don't even know where they're gonna go with that. That's gonna be an interesting one. If anything, I would I would probably like I, I don't know, man. I I would think like if they did the they redid redid one. No, since two was a prequel. No, I hope they they're, don't. They're I, like, I would love it to be an, an original, just an original story. Red Dead Three, not. total, they, total new character. They better not. They, they, no, they, I mean, they can still go with like they, they can do a John or Arthur again, but I mean, it's... no, they can't, they can't with Marston. Marston's he's dead. No, I know, but I mean, like his son, you know. Oh, Jack, that's yeah. true. You can continue can with, Jack. with Jack, that's yeah. true. So that'd be interesting see. as well. So, it's a possibility. Is it probably? Probably not, but we'll, we'll see. see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll go down the rabbit hole and uh do uh do a last of us two, you know? You get to play the bad guy. You know? Oh yeah. Uh, it might be a possibility. You know, the opposite side of what's been going That's on. That's a cool direction. Uh, or ex- in, instead of being the outlaw, you're actually the law and you yeah. maybe like you're uh, to the degree of how good of a policeman no, uh, you, you are. No, uh, you know what's his name? Uh, freaking guy that's in your camp. The guy that's in your camp that backstabs you. Oh, Micah Bell. Yeah. Micah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he could you could play as him because then you get to see the backside of what's going on. You know, the underside. Oh, okay. That would be a cool way. You know, but who knows? Red Dead Three comes out after GTA Six. Whenever GTA Six wants to come out. <laughs> yeah. Well, barely got announced. We'll see. Yep. So, uh, Jerry, um, what have I been playing? Uh, uh, Star Wars Hunters Mobile. Uh, I've been trying that out. Um, of course, of course, Red Dead. Mm-hmm. I've been stuck on that. And then, uh, I do plan on uh, I, this weekend. I'm going to uh, knock out Final Fantasy and get that done. Oh, 
Cause yeah. uh yeah, I mean the one thing I don't want really anything looming because I, I wanna just I really kinda wanna focus on Red Dead. I've really been enjoying it and kind of diving back in it, but mm-hmm. I don't want anything like looming. So uh, I'm gonna uh I'm gonna finish Final Fantasy. Okay. Just get that done. Nice. So I'm uh, I'm gonna I'll plan on that. This week. I'll do it with you this week, Jerry. Yeah, I'm uh, oh. this weekend. I'll, yeah. I'll text you, I'll text you when I beat it. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll text you where I'm at and when I beat it. Yeah, you're not gonna be it this week, but I'm just gonna text you when you win. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> okay. All right. But yeah, but yeah, so, that's that's been about it. All right. So with that, I want to thank everybody who crashed game night with us tonight. Um, you know, first time crashing. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you heard, please drop us a follow on the platform of your choice. You can head over to crashinggamenight.com, find all the platforms that we are on. Um, and just with that, guys, everything is getting super, super crazy right now in the world especially here in the states as we are heading into election yeah, the, season the election's getting crazy things are getting yeah. really just i don't even know like i've seen so many memes of just everyone going hey uk <laughs> we fucked up oh, God. <laughs> oh, you know um but yeah it's been crazy so just please everyone just be excellent to each other <clears throat> That's right, everybody. Uh, once again, we're going to uh, send out that same message. Uh, we want everyone to practice a, a little bit of patience, try and be a little bit more courteous, uh, lend a helping hand when you can. Overall, let's just try to do uh, to do better. Let's try and be better. Um, and like I said, let's just try and practice a little, uh, a little kindness, uh, be a little helpful out there. And, and overall, let's just try and... Uh, 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 change the outlook of uh, what's going on right now because everything's looking kind of crazy and uh all you nerds out there once again you be you uh and uh no excuses you guys be who you are and uh, be safe out there okay j-rock that's it's right to guys. you yeah um again hey it's uh, J- uh july 2nd we made it through half the year already but uh this week please be careful out there it is fourth of july uh-huh. people gonna go, go yeah. crazy you know people gonna be grilling non-stop be careful fireworks be, be safe definitely be safe be fireworks smart. if you if it is legal where you are correct please. or if it's not still yeah if we it's know not you still know, be careful still be because, safe <laughs> you know like <laughs> there there are those people out there that are having too much fun so just just be safe out there. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a crazy weekend. So please, please be safe out there. Enjoy yourself. It is 4th of July. Um, you're going to have a good old time. Hopefully everybody that went to uh, Anime Expo. Um, I forget if it, it was last week. Yeah. So hopefully everybody that went to Anime Expo. Hopefully you guys were all safe because Anime Expo is too crazy. Yep. So... so. You know, hopefully you guys are all good. Oh no, it's this weekend. So this weekend, yes, Fourth uh, of July. Be safe at Anime mm-hmm. Expo, guys. Like we've seen the videos, we've seen the stuff. Just relax, relax. You know, mm-hmm. it is it is a convention that comes every year. You know, people go crazy. Just relax, relax. Mm-hmm. But you know, I'm missing my boy because normally I would. Uh, Missy Theo, yeah, missing Theo. I would, I would just right in, boom, <laughs> get in it. But you know, I guess I'll have to shoot off to Jerry. Uh, Jerry, I'm gonna give you a chance again. You know, we're gonna beat, we're gonna Ooh. beat Final Fantasy this week. So I'm gonna give it to you right now. You're gonna it's, let him have some. I'm, I'm gonna let it. I'm, I'm gonna give some. Let faith. him have some. I'm gonna make it my own again. I'm not, I'm not. There's you're gonna faith. Jason. What you're saying is you're giving him the opportunity of redemption. Uh, there's no redeeming i do it my it, the, that's the I mean, thing like, i'm gonna i'm gonna do it my own always. it will it will be his fifth be maybe me. six times so you know <laughs> i'm gonna be me hey but everyone anyways oh, okay go ahead I, I will you do you do you jay as just as we say on this podcast you do you boo yeah 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 but anyways just you know I'm, I'm gonna give it to you jay because we're gonna beat final fantasy this weekend you That's and I, right. both of us so i mean like i'm holding it to you mm-hmm. i'm holding it to you no i got you i got I'm you to you Okay. Yep. Ready? You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Not my man, Theo. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, send us out like Theo does. That's right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. TTFN. Ta-ta for now. 
Good night, everybody. Close enough. Okay. Close enough. Yeah. I, like I said, 